media mode. Covers your story. Your story will be covered in the ground up. All right, welcome back to an all-new episode of The Jason Lee Show. My next guest is somebody that needs no introduction. He's known because he's the most viral thing on the planet. Plus, he'll be receiving an award today. We'll keep that a surprise. Please welcome my friend, entrepreneur, artist, mogul, and father, Safari. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so first of all... Can you, I say something? Yes. I just want to say, from the entry from the lobby to the bring up to the penthouse to the walk-in I'm blown away like, yeah from where you started we can go back to 2014 15 you could insert it I remember one of my first interviews with you when you were Melissa Ford and y'all was do what was it the D dash dash radio dash yeah. yo this is beautiful like this in person like the cameras doing no justice yeah like Thank I'm you. I'm I'm proud of you. Thank this you. is beautiful. It's, thank you. It's a budget. Yeah, we wanted to put it together. Uh, you know, once we to decided to uh, elevate and actually become a show, we wanted to create a space where people could come in and, you know, be a little funky. You can glow and, it up. And you match the set. And I did not do this on purpose. I, ain't gonna, I got like about 11 fur coats out here with me because it's cold. And I did not know this was going to happen. Honestly, everything with me in life right now just works out. Wait, are those Cartier's? So this is a young black man. His name is, um, well, this brand is called Sophie Sierra. The glasses are? Yeah. Those are fire. Yeah, I, I'll get you a pair every Please. color. Yeah. Okay. If I put them in touch with you, you'll get a box. Because I literally lost my Cartiers that look like those, but those and look better. These are fire, and these are... And it's black owned? Yeah, black owned. What? Oh, you might not get these back. As a yeah. matter of fact... No, these, I, I got another pair. These are fire. No, listen, I'll let, okay, that's, cool. that's your swag. We'll that. yeah. One thing about Safari, he's going to always come swagged out. He definitely wore what could possibly uh, be the start of a war between PETA. Has PETA ever thrown any powder on you? Because Yo. you're wearing like three def different animals. I don't know what that is. So this is a full-length fox. Um, shout out Messiah, the fur god. Um, I will never forget I was in Manhattan, New York City, um, City Hall, and there was a big anti-fur ban going on. Yeah. And... The new, these people paid me to come. Like, I'm not gonna lie, it was a stupid bag too. To I come went, to City Hall wearing the fur? Yes, and I went and I spoke on a podium on the Channel 5 News and everything. I'm gonna send you the clip. And bro, I walked out in the full length crazy fur and it was thousands of PETA people out there. And when I walked past them, they erupted. They were yelling the craziest trying to throw at me. My security had to run and throw me in the car. It was fire. But did they pay you to come and wear the fur because it was an anti peter thing? So they were trying to ban selling fur coats in New York City. Okay. So that would have put the whole fur district out of community. And first, New York, people wear furs. Exactly. So all the people who work in there like, yo, you're going to put a lot of people out of jobs. So it, it, it got into a whole, like, um, protest against them and all of that. So... Mm. So you were intentionally being uh, controversial, but in support of what you thought exactly. was Exactly. They said, hey, look, and, you know, my stylist, Messiah, shout out to him. He called me and he said, yo, um, the head of some fur committee or whatever, he said, yo, they want to, you know, hire you for you to come and talk at this thing. And I'm like, all right. But it was kind of a setup, but it was worth it. Okay. So Safari hasn't been here to the show ever, to this show, but he hasn't been to Hollywood Unlocked since, has it been 2015? Yeah. 15, 16. One of those. Okay, what took you so long to get here? Because we've actually been talking about you coming to the show for a while. Me and you have been talking, and it's been supposed to happen for a long time, but um, I just don't ever come to Cali like that. Mm -hmm. Like, I lived here for 10, 12 years, and then, um, you know, I lost my uncle out here. After my uncle got killed, that was like my last memory of L.A., and I just didn't want to come back mm -hmm. anymore. So um, that kind of just made me not want to have anything to do with coming out here. So, but now I'm... Um, able to finally come out here and not think about that. Okay, so a lot has changed since you were last here. Mm -hmm. um, you've had children. Yeah. Did you get married? You got married? Yeah, I got married. You got married. married. You got divorced. Yeah. Um, you, uh, you got robbed. Remember, since I left? Okay, since yeah. Before, since the last time you were here? I mean, yeah, you've yeah, gone yeah. That happened in 20, Yeah, yeah, that happened in 2018. And, and the, the reason why I bring it up is because I have not talked to you on camera. We talk off camera, we text or whatever, we check yeah. in, and it's always love. But 
Uh, we we have not done an interview since way back then. So for people Damn, listening, what is that, 10 years? It's It's been almost 10 years that we've not, since we've done an interview. Mm-hmm. So for anybody who says, why is Jason going here or there? I'm catching up with him for me because we don't talk about his business off camera. We I talk don't. about it in, yeah, off camera. We here. talk about life. We don't talk yeah. about, you know, the details of whatever. But when you come to this set and you sit on this stage, it's, it's an invitation to ask questions. Yeah, of so course. So we're catching up. And you want to know what? This is probably like my first sit down in like, it's been years. And every time I say I'm going to do shit like this, I'm like, the only people I'll sit down with is you and Breakfast Club. Yeah. That's well, it. Because I, 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 I just, show. I hate being around people where it's like, you don't even know me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We've known each other for a long time. So it's like, at least it's more of a conversation as opposed to me sitting around doing an interview with somebody. Yeah, I've known you since you were pulling up to Philippe, uh, to Philippe Chow in LA. Philippe Chow in LA ain't existed in a long time. And I was part owner of that and nobody knew. Yeah. But that's the thing. First I want to ask, so you, you grew up in humble beginnings and then you found your way, and we'll talk about that, but you found your way and, and, and have always seen, in my eyes, have always looked like you've been hustling and yeah. have been a hustler, entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. Do you feel like when you were in LA and you were hustling that people knew that you had that hustle in you or did they think you were somebody else? Um, in LA, it's just so hard to tell because everybody out here is so good at fronting that they're getting it. And I called LA the Matrix. Mm-hmm. Like all people wanted to do was go to house parties and um, act like they were getting it, but everybody was out here struggling. Even at that point, when I came and I did your show, like I was, I remember my first year going on Love and Hip Hop. I looked like I was lit, but mm-hmm. the money ran out, and I was regrouping myself and seeing, yo, where do I want to be? And I had to, you know, restart. So when you first moved to LA, we knew that you were. Uh, dating Nicki Minaj at the time, mm-hmm. but were you also writing for Nicki Minaj at the time? Because I know you've never really answered that question, so I'm just yeah. going to get that right out the way. All right, so look, with that, because people love to say and make it seem, oh, yeah, ghostwriter and all that shit. I was never sitting there writing rap saying, boom, 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 here, look. But me and her, as far as the vibe and the energy we just had in the studio, that's when it was fun, because it wasn't the music business yet. It was just a fun music um, process, just a fun process in making music. But, um, you know, like, people, even up till now, like, anytime these fan bases be arguing and they be tagging me, like, yo, that's just 10 years ago, mm-hmm. and they still talking about that. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, it, it, it was more of a A&R and just bringing the energy that I bring just as far as with how I am in the studio with just a vibe, you know what I'm saying? But when you say it wasn't really the business because nowadays, like, you know, you'll see an artist do a song, then you'll see on the back end, if you go and look in the, in the paperwork, there's all these writers and whatever. I don't know why in hip hop it's a thing if you have writers on a project or not. Why is it, why is that even a thing? Because the thing is with, like, all these extra names, like, if you give me the beat to a song that's lit, your name's going in the credits. Because I gave you the beat. Just because you gave me the beat, you're gonna get credit for that. You know what I'm saying? If I find a beat and say, yo, this is hot, please do something on this, I'm, I'm gonna get credit. It's like, all right, cool. It's like a finder's fee kind of setup, you know? But when you were doing that as A&R, were mm-hmm. you getting that credit? Yeah, on the albums. On the albums, yeah. But like, individually, like for records and stuff, I wasn't really like, super in the business like oh i did this beat I, I, I want my i want like percentage or i want you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. i just was having fun doing it mm-hmm. that's where i was at that time in the super beginning of it you know but what were I'm you saying? not focused on the business part of it because it was your girlfriend or because you just weren't trying it was to because it was my girl it was mm-hmm. the business didn't even matter i just mm-hmm. was like going great and let's just keep it going mm-hmm. and then when it ran its course and wasn't going great because i didn't even know all the drama that you all have been through in your relationship. I mean, there's been so many things said that I've heard in silos or people have whispered here and there to me that I haven't even asked you because it's, it is 10 years ago and she's in a whole nother relationship. You've mm-hmm. moved on and had a family, but because we're here, I got to ask questions. So I know you, Jason. Yes, you do. So you're in a relationship, you're, you're in the music and you have this dual partnership with her and then it starts to go left. 
I didn't know the relationship with you and Nicki Minaj got violent. And why do you never talk about it? Is it because you don't want to cause no problems because it's been so long ago? Like, whenever it comes to me and relationships, no matter what people see, like, I let people think whatever. I'm never, ever really going to go out there and really give detail. Like, I just... That shit is really not in me. Like, even when people say shit about me and it don't even be, like, right, like, I can't see myself going on the internet and clearing up every single thing that's said about me. But, you know, just, I don't want to look pressed either. Like, and half of this shit I don't even remember. Okay, so do you remember, I heard allegedly there was a time, there's a video out there of her chasing you around with a knife and bashing up your cars. Yo. I don't know... Because if you say there's no video and then I put it in the show, you're going to feel some type of way. Wow, that, that would be, that would be, wow. This guy no, but I, I, heard, I heard that she was chasing you with a knife. I don't know how it was being filmed. Maybe you were filming it, but then I heard she destroyed your vehicles. Chasing, this guy chasing is crazy. Oh, my God. Did that happen? Or was it Roman? I mean... <laughs> Yo, look. Listen, man. No, because I, I'm just trying to look. I haven't had you here in almost ten years. There's been ten years of yeah, conversations. Yeah, you, you really, you really going back ten years. This guy, you think about stuff I don't even remember. You don't remember getting chased with a knife. Not even you. You didn't tell me this. I'm telling you, I heard that there. There's a video that certain people had to get in the middle of controlling because it was gonna get out, and it was a video of her chasing you with a knife and tearing up your cars. How did I get here? (laughs) Jason, look, one thing thing I give you, I don't know, like, you are, you are really like a super, just, you just know and get. You just know everybody's business. It's just, I, I just just don't understand how. Like it's just so. Like I don't know nothing about nobody. <laughs> you don't. Like I don't like. That's that. Oh man, I don't even know what cup to grab right now. The water, if you feel safe. But the, but the other one, if you want to answer the question. No, I mean the reason why I ask is because we live in an era where if a man does something. Jonathan Majors, he's in a car with his girlfriend. We don't know what happens. Uh-huh. All of a sudden now, been canceled, lost everything. Yeah, that's foul. Nicki Minaj chasing you through a garage with a knife in her hand, swinging it, threatening to kill you, and tearing up your vehicles, allegedly. She's on tour right now. I ain't gonna lie. You been to, you been to the show? Safari, were you were you almost <laughs> killed? No, I wasn't almost killed. Like, you know oh, what I'm saying? So like, she wasn't close enough. <laughs> like, you know, um, listen, everybody in relationships go through stuff. I've never been chased with a knife. <sighs> Look. But if you were being chased with a knife, it's because you thought I'm, you were... I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not even talking about that. I've been in, like, so many situations where, like, girls pick things up. Mm-hmm. And it's like, you know, women are emotional creatures, and I, I understand. I'm, I'm, I'm older now, and I, I understand that, like, women just react differently to things. Do you... This guy. Were you ever afraid that that video would get out? And if that video got out, what do you think people would think? I, I, don't, I don't know, but I really I don't want to have nothing to do with nothing from that old. Oh, man. I mean, this guy's it's hot in here. <laughs> okay, so, okay, let's move on because we've established that that's happened, right? Okay, so when that incident happened, did you stay in the relationship? What the hell? What am I supposed to even say right now? The truth. Why? Because I think that what you've done a great job at is avoiding answering questions. But then the Internet has continued 
to deal with the fallout of a person that we don't know because the blanks haven't been filled in. So you're just able to help color a picture that nobody else can really color because they haven't had that experience, right? But if you feel like a need to protect that era of your life for whatever reason, you know, we can move you on. You know, it's, yeah, it's just because, like, I, I, I just really hate, like, you know, because it's really, you see how, like, Omarion, he's just super zen now and calm, to, calm about everything, like. Omarion came to the show and answered every question. He didn't avoid one question. Okay, so. So, another example, anybody that sat in these chairs? Because this is a show where we just tell our story, right? You know, you talked about people coming to L.A. and faking it and being this and being that. The thing that's made me successful where I have all this is I've just literally lived in my truth. Because what's the, what they going to do? What's the mm -hmm. internet going to do? Be mad? Okay, they they mad at you when you do good. They mad at you when you do bad. That is, they just going to be mad anyway. No matter what. But at least you're still here and didn't get stabbed up that day to tell your L story. Listen, listen, like, you know, Got it. It's like, yeah, you, you, you get what I'm saying? No. <laughs> like, I just, I just, I want, I want peace and in anything in life, for me, if there's no peace, you know, I just part from it. You kind of give me the guy, like you're a good guy. I think you get a lot of flack sometimes on the internet because you are a troll and you do pick very toxic women to be with, women who all want to be abusive. I mean, you have a pattern. Um, and so I know you to be a great guy. And then you, you, you know, you went through that very, very violent experience, allegedly. Um, but like how long after that did you stay? I can ask the question a thousand ways, but I'll move on if you want me to. I don't, um, damn. I'm so rusty from doing interviews. It's been a while, guys. That's okay. We have time. Um, I gotta think. Damn, it's a decade passed now. Damn, they're gonna be like, "Oh my God!" Ten years later, this is what you're still talking about. Okay, so in May of 2023, in a clip, you were in the back seat of a car, and you were in an interview with Rashad Mormon to discuss your dating life. And you said, when they asked you about, um, you know, if there was a woman that you could say got away from you. You said, I wouldn't say one they got away, but you know, sometimes when I look back over my life in certain situations and know that I see the amount of things that I've been through, just when it comes to breaking up, you look back and say, damn, maybe you know, we could have got through that. And you said, you'll give them a hint. We've been together for a long time. And people speculated that you were talking about Nicki Minaj. I was trolling. Okay, so you didn't mean that. Yeah, I didn't mean that. Um, honestly, like, you know, right now, where I am in my life, just as far as, you know, just having love and respect for a woman, I, I, would, I would just have to say it's the woman who gave me two beautiful kids. Um, no, no, no matter where we are, just as far as seeing eye to eye and things like that, like, she's, you know, she's an amazing mother. Oh, you're talking about Erica? Yeah. Oh, so is that who you were talking about then? Or you were talking about Nikki there? there? Let me tell you, I don't even remember what I was talking about because I was sitting in the back of a car and m maybe my answer got misconstrued with the question previously. Well, yeah, because the following Tuesday you went to a neighborhood talk and you said that people were reaching thinking that that was Nikki. Yeah, see? Damn, bro, you got... Who the hell looks all this stuff up? Just people. So people were reaching it. And I think it's because you are so, um, you're so private about who you like or, or, or don't you, like you, or what you've been Is it because you like the mystique of people wanting to continue to ask because after they ask, there's nothing else it's, in it's, your love life to talk about? It's not about private. It's just like, I just feel like when it comes to just women, if it's something that I feel like it don't have to be out, I just, you know, like, personal things I don't want to like put that out about people like like if a woman says it and then I gotta like respond to it then it's like but me like as a man talking about it it's like 
And I'm like, oh, look at this bitch ass nigga. What the hell are you talking about? Like, it just, it just don't make no sense for me to do. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But then I'm confused because just the other day when Kanye went on Big Boy show and said that he asked to have a threesome with Nicki Minaj and Amber Rose, you went online and confirmed it. I was surprised that he remembered that because I didn't think that that was something he would remember. You know what I'm saying? That's a big deal. Yeah, I was, it was, I woke up and everybody was sending me that and I was cracking up laughing and I was like, damn, he remembered that. That was a, um, that was pretty interesting, but you know, he spoke about it. So it's like, it's out there. Yeah, we was in Hawaii and we playing basketball. I'm like, just doing mad shit with Kanye. I'm like, damn, I'm playing basketball with him. We going to the gym. We had yeah, this nice house, I'm at the crib with him. And then towards the end, I'm like, oh, you smoothing me to try to find out if you could, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Pull a ooh up. So I'm like, okay. But the same way I'm here is the same way I was there. So I'm just like, Phew. So you guys were playing basketball in Hawaii? Yeah. Cause that's where just he was, you and that, Kanye? That's where he was working on the, um, the album at, the Dark Twisted Fantasies. So, so wait, you were in Hawaii with Kanye West mm -hmm. while he was making Dark Twisted Fantasy? Yeah. In 2010. But you don't, I'm, I'm and, you horrible at years. and you remember those details, but you don't remember being chased through a house with a knife and almost Hey, killed. I remember happy details about my life. Okay, keep trying it. Let me tell you something. Uh, anyway, we'll continue. <laughs> this guy has a lot of cards over there. You know what's so crazy? I just saw Nas the other night. Uh-huh. Nas is such an icon. I remember when he walked up to me and spoke to me. I hadn't seen him in a long time. And I hadn't seen him since he spoke to his wife. Um, you've been spilling tea. You talked about Nikki kissing Nas behind your back. You've been spilling tea, but you've nah, been spilling tea. Nah, nah, nah. Look, me. I saw that interview clip. That interview was from 2016. I don't know why it resurfaced as if I'm just now talking about it. That shit was old as hell. I don't know why people brought that up and was talking about it as if it just happened now. But then they ended up getting in a relationship. <sighs> Oh, yeah, that I'm just was, saying. That, that was, Stop playing. Safari, so you playing. You pulled up to the Jason Lee show. You got your friend. I'm one of your closest friends right here. I'm that was hey, look. Pow pow pow. I mean, was, she kissed him behind your back and then ended up in a relationship with him. Do you think that was a Queen's Connect or what? <laughs> okay. <laughs> wow. Do you get this grace from your mom or your dad? Like, who taught you, like, to give grace? Like, where did that come from? Yo, I'm, like, I'm a very just respectful person. I don't, like, I, I, I hate, like, you know, I don't like putting people in lights that just aren't positive. Either, like, be positive or don't say nothing. I'm going to put, I want to put some love in your heart. I know you have a lot of love in your heart. But um, I know you being messy makes you a lot of money though. So it's like it might be a messy though. No, I'm just saying. In general, I know there's a couple times I seen you on live and I just see you talking and doing <laughs> stuff. And I remember one time we was on, I was at doing the BET Awards and you was in Cancun and you're gonna I was, pay for this by the way. You're you're gonna pay for what you're about to do. No, you're just gonna keep continue because no, I'm already prepared for it. No, I just remember we were on live. And I, you had to interview me for the BET Awards or something, and it just was, <laughs> I'm like, this guy, Jason, is crazy. But you was lit by the pool, so I'm like, okay. First of all, let me tell you, we are ready to prepare for this moment because the one thing Safari is never going to do is try to one-up me. We, we had, me and Safari had a, um, matter of fact, let's just fly it in, please. Thank you very much. We had a moment where I was in Mexico on vac Give me another one. I got the gay one because what I did was gay. We went viral because I had a preset live interview of Safari while he was at the BET Awards. I was on vacation in Mexico on a date with somebody that I'm not talking to anymore. I did not know that I had to go live with you because I had forgotten and when I went live, I had already had so much 1942 by the man selling sombreros 
that I went live and said something highly inappropriate. Do you remember that? I don't remember what you said. I just remember you was like drunken in heat. And I just was like, like, I don't know. I feel like I kind of deal with stuff like that well because I'm just like, you know, I like whatever. So it's not, I don't get uncomfortable by it. Like, okay. You can go back and research the video. It's online. But what I will say, which was funny because one, I don't even remember going live with you that day. <laughs> but you know what? You really don't because you hit me like days later and you was like, yo, bro, everyone is telling me what I did. I'm sorry. I don't even remember that. Well, I'll, I'll well, let me tell you it was lit. And, that, and I, I wanted to bring it up today. I plan to bring it up today for two reasons. One, because I wanted to apologize to you in person because you guys drugged me for filth. You dragged him for filth. You know, you expected him to be mad at me, to attack me online. You expected me to whatever. One thing for sure is I respect my friend. I have a lot of straight male friends who are very comfortable in who they are and they allow me to be me even when I'm being messy. And he, he didn't make me feel bad about having too much liquor and being inappropriate. So I wanted to first apologize to you in your face and say thank you for being a friend. I'm here. The second thing is y'all said I was on heroin, cocaine, crack. They said you I was just it was, was liquor. Drunk. Yeah, it was liquor. Yeah. But uh, uh, calling Safari a couple of days later and him laughing in my face about how inappropriate I was was very embarrassing because I don't apologize for anything. I apologized to you, didn't I? Hey, I felt bad. I, hey, I'm I'm honored, and I didn't even really take offense. I was like, ah, he's lit. I ain't really like. Okay. Well, anyway, enough about that. We're not in Mexico anymore. And here's the other thing: because uh, you were so gracious to give us all your penis online, we're gonna give you the Mandingo Hall of Fame award. <laughs> now we're gonna give you this award. This award is given to people whose Mandingos have gone live from coast to coast, and we've seen your penis pop multiple times on the internet. So here you go, this is yours. Yo, yes, wow. Gonna, we'll get a name plate on it and give it's an actual real Can I give a time. speech? Yes, you have to give it, that's your camera right there. Um, first and foremost, uh, I wanna thank God. Um, mommy, thank you. Mommy, I made it. <laughs> thank you, Jason. Thank you, Hollywood Unlock, and um, to the world. Yes. Thank you, OnlyFans is still up. Congratulations. Now, there was a penis scandal, though, because we've, we've seen different angles of the photos. Is your, is your penis the size it looks? All right, let me, were you talking about the video? Yes. All right, I was not hard. Okay. I was not hard at all. See, he knows the scandals that he's in. I'm just the conduit No, look, the... listen, there's different, there's different levels of hard and, see, now we're talking my language. <laughs> different people get me to different levels. If you ever kind of in a situation and you're dealing with it and it's like, ah, damn, why am I even doing this? You're not going to be all the way where you need to be. So low key was a situation I shouldn't have even been dealing with. You know what I'm saying? So was that a video that you gave to a girl? I mean, is that a video of like a sexual situation you were in with somebody? Yeah. And it was, it was, oh, that was so horrible. Wow. Like I, I wouldn't leak that. Like what the hell? That was horrible work. But why did she, okay, so the picture that everybody saw that earned you this award, that uh -huh. is the true picture. You no, know, there was a video. The video? Yeah. Yes, the pictures was something else. Because there were two things that were released. You know, one, one was a, the, video, the first thing was a video. And that one went wild crazy, and that earned you this. Yes. Then the other thing, then the other thing that leaked was what? Was it a photo or a video, another video? It was the video. The video was what was just shaky, and it was like, okay, I just shouldn't have been somewhere where I wasn't rock hard. Okay. Well, we, we thank you on behalf of the Mandingo Hall of Fame Award for at least being hard once in your life. What the, the you know, this guy. Let's talk about when you saw her man show up outside a, 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 a random building in meat packing looking for Offset when Offset wasn't even there. Did you see that on the internet? Yes, I did see that. Do you ever think that he's going to show up with his goons and say, where you at so far, where you outside at five in the morning when you probably sleep in another state? I, I, um, I highly doubt it. I don't think that would make any sense. Because you've moved on. Yeah, it's like, for what? But when you look at that relationship and you know yours was less toxic and less dramatic and you guys, she was at the height of her career, all her music was hitting. She was, <laughs> you don't start smiling, you see you being messy. You know she was at the height of her career when you guys were together. Music was hitting. You guys were selling out shows. You were there in the back. You were her ditty to her mace. 
okay? And, and all scandals excluded, and you guys were living the, the, the life of luxury, and then now, they can't even go to a park, okay? And, and that's just the reality of where we are. The music is not hitting like it was, and she's in this relationship with a man who is, in many people's minds, ruining her legacy, the legacy that you built. Wow. Well, the good thing is that you, you sound like you care. That's, that's caring. That matters. <laughs> like, no, you... And you, you don't. No, of, of course. Anyone who um, I've spent the time with in my life, I, you know, care about their well-being, where they're at, and where they're going. Like, you know, that's... You know, I want everyone healthy and happy. Do you ever look back and say, that should be us? No. Okay, let's move on. I'm, I'm really happy about where I am in life. Like right now, like seriously, like my level of freedom in every aspect of my life, I, I couldn't be happier. But nobody cares about that. No one wants anyone happy, especially on a Jason Lee interview. They just want you to sit here. They, wanna, they want the, um, the headline clips. Jason Lee wants to get to the T, and that's the truth. So let me ask you this, because in 2018, I haven't seen him in 10 years on my show. So I have to ask these questions because people want to know. And if he's not going to answer, you know, whatever. In 2018, on Hot 97, she said that you were out there throwing dirt on her name, but was having prostitutes and stealing their credit cards. Now, she put this out about you. You never responded to it. So if I don't ask the question when you're sitting right here, I wouldn't be the journalist that I am. So did you steal her credit cards with the hookers? Um, I, paying for hookers with a credit card sounds crazy. Just, Venmo at least, cash out, okay. Yeah, so. So why are you, okay, I get it. You're beyond it, you're in a positive space. You've grown through all this. I blame you not coming here in 10 years, which is why I have to ask you all these questions. Damn, this guy got me going through the memory bank. Any PTSD or, you know, I don't know if you remember this. Do you remember we were hanging out the day, BET weekend, where I was supposed to meet you at Penthouse, mm -hmm. and I showed up earlier than you. Yeah, yep. And you never made it. Yep. The odds of that. And I didn't even get to witness it, but we saw it all online. That was when you and Meek Mill got into it. I'm not going to get into that because you all saw that moment. Did you all ever get past that? Did you all, you two, because I remember the last time you and I linked up was in New York mm -hmm. when I asked Floyd Mayweather to put you and Meek Mill in the ring together. <laughs> we were going to try to get a fight. I was going to try to make a bag out of it. I, I wanted to I, see. I do, I do remember you. Yeah, I do remember you trying to do that. Did you all ever piece it up? We, we spoke through... Um, Mutual people, we never spoke directly, but like that, that, um, damn, what was that? Was it eight? That was five years ago. No, that was more than eight. 2008, was it? Yeah, that feel, that feel like 10 years ago too. Was it? Yeah, that was a long time ago, because I was living in LA when that happened. I've that was a long time. I've been out of LA for a minute now. But you guys pieced it up. I mean, you guys are good. Yeah, nah, that ain't no, because really at the end of the day, that was never anything direct that was because of mm -hmm. you know who one was dating and a new one's dating and all of that just boyfriend ex-boyfriend bullshit you know what i'm saying but even hearing your name in controversy because if people know you privately you're not even that guy e exactly but so, i don't know how you always end up in it like it's like me i'm not even messy but i'm always in some mess i don't know i feel like um i don't know when it comes to just the urban media and just these people reporting shit, it's like my, my name, it's like, people love to hate on me, people love to give an opinion on me, so, you know, like people be hitting me and asking me, oh, do you be paying these blocks to put you up? I'm like, what? <laughs> like, I was a part of a, a big situation that people still to this day connect me to, so they like to give their opinion on shit of, you know, where they think it's at now as opposed to then. But I'll give you more credit than that. I don't think we just write about you because you, I know we don't write about you because you were part of that situation. Mm -hmm. like, in fact, 
when you first came to Love & Hip Hop, you had different energy, a big personality, super entertaining, uh, hot, just you always had some shit going on and you always knew how to keep us all. And I swear, I never do it on purpose. It's crazy. It's like every time like, like something happens with me, it's like, like even with me being on all the franchises, I don't move to different states to be on the show. By the way, you're the only person in Love & Hip Hop history to ever be on all the franchises. You know that? Yeah, so I think Bobby said that to me. Yeah, um, that wasn't a goal, but I really lived in Hollywood. I really lived in New York. I really lived in Atlanta. I really lived in Miami. So the shit just be happening. Yeah. But which of, the, which of those franchises did you like the most? Because I felt like you had fun here in L.A. I ain't going to lie. Hollywood, it was like my <laughs> first intro to it. We had... Yeah, you was on the shit. That was the old Jason Lee when you, you, how much you weighed back then? No, I'm just saying you were, you were thicker back then. You, you know were heavier. It's funny set. how you remember my waistline, but you can't remember how you wasted that time with Nicki Minaj. First of all, I didn't remember you your do, waistline. You, you didn't forget who you me? said. Ever. Wait, you didn't forget before you tried to read me about my weight. I wasn't who reading. I'm saying to. me and you were on a TV wait, wait, show wait, together. Wait, wait, wait. No, he didn't just try to read me on my show, Safari. Jason, you look great now. What no, are you talking about? I understand. About? I understand, but you That's not to... reading you. Okay. I was like, listen, you was listen, different back listen, then. Listen, listen. Yes, I weighed 323 pounds, and yes, clap it up for me. I lost 123 pounds. 132. I lost 132 pounds. That's crazy. I was fat. Wow. You're a new... This is my... Hold on. It's... Damn, when's the last time I seen you? Uh, I had lost, I don't remember, maybe I was fat then too. I've been, I was fat for a long time. Oh, the last but, time I saw you was when we was Flo with Floyd in, um, yeah, I was, in New York. I don't remember what I would weigh then. I know I'm, I know I'm not fat anymore. Yeah. You weren't Is fat that why you didn't either. hang out with me on Love & Hip Hop? Because you only really hung out with um, Ray J and all the people, A1. Is that before you were trying to sleep with um, Lyrica? No, hey, shout out to Ray J too. Tronix, his new um, streaming platform just, um, Launched. Yeah, he, when he comes to promote his shit, he can talk about that. But you were trying to sleep with Lyrica, right? No, no. That was some love and hip hop shit. Oh, so that was just a storyline? Yeah. Oh, that wasn't, yeah. But, but y listen. Y'all dragged that out. It was great. But I got a dating show <laughs> that's coming out on Ray J's network. Is it Marla Negra on that? No. Oh. Because you bought her twins Rolexes and that pissed off your baby mom, the one that you praised earlier. Did you plan that for the storyline too or was that like real deal love type stuff? Um, hold on, I'm losing, I'm losing, I'm getting sidetracked here. You know, the, the, the skyline still looks good in the back. You were saying it wasn't going to look good yeah, anymore. Yeah, you know what, I, at first when you got here and you were late to the show, I thought, you know, I don't want to interview him if it's going to get dark, but you know what? This I think a nice time lapse of light to dark would be great for the promo because do 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 do. So you didn't try to sleep with Lyrica? That was not real. No, no you way. Were like the villain. Sleep yeah, for that one. Behind your friend's back. Look, no, we were. Um, how did that happen? I don't remember how it happened, but you know, you you on the show, you know how it works. I never lied. Well, we we lied. <laughs> That's how you make it to all the cities, right? Okay, wait. So then, was you and are you and Amara lied too, or is that real? Like, are y'all have you have you you had sex with Amara La Negra? No, never. No. The way that penis popped around on that video, you ain't put it in her. No, oh, me. Oh, but we do. Hey, we got a dope new song together. Did you see the video for our song? No. Put, put it in the insert for this. Okay. The name of the song is Safari. Me and Amara La Negra. <sighs> so you never had sex together. No, why are we supposed to? I thought that was your girl. Amara? Isn't that what they say on the show? I'm saying we on the show and um, we, we on the show, doing the show. We rocking, we building, we, you know what I'm saying? We friends. And so friends don't buy their baby, her twin babies Rolexes. That was on the show? It was on social media. Yeah, that was on the show. Damn, Love & Hip Hop's been coming on for a long time, bucko. So, did you buy the Rolexes because you wanted her, like, I, I would never buy a Rolex for somebody or their kids if I wasn't getting it. Like, 
You didn't even hit it once since she had you doing all that? Was it the... No, okay, I, look, um, you, it's, life isn't about sex when it comes to building and connecting with someone. It's about the connecting and spiritually um, building and... Making. When you have a watch like ours, this is an investment. We don't buy these to tell time. We that buy these because we want to get it. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. You got, where your watch at? I ain't gonna lie, I forgot my but shit. Look at all that jewelry. Yeah. Somebody buy me one of these? They getting it. So you mean to tell me you bought those two Rolexes for those two babies? I'm a nice guy. You ain't get no head? No, we've never, nope, we've never done nothing physical. We, we made an amazing song together, a music video, we put it out and we just let the world see what's happening. Cause she recently said that she got hired to do her job and it was a publicity stunt that you guys weren't dating. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't know why she said that. Okay. You've had a lot of really interesting relationships. Cause you know, you and Erica, me and Erica used to be friends. We're no longer any friends anymore. You know why that. not? You know why. Because you, what was it? You leaked the pregnancy? Was it the baby's pictures or the fact that it, she was pregnant? Okay, why did we fall out? Yeah, oh yeah, because you leaked that she was pregnant. Okay, so Safari is my friend and yes. this is my real friend. We don't friend, we're not the public on social media friends, my real friend. He gets into a relationship with Erica Mena, who I thought was my friend. They get pregnant. Neither one of them give me the exclusive. I've been trying to get them both on my show. So here's the deal. I'm not even doing my job because I'm hoping my friends give me the exclusive. So they don't. She was rude to her makeup artist or photographer. They were mad, so they leaked it to us. Sorry. And we put it out. Well, I don't know who the hell would ever make up on here. I don't know who, nothing about that. But you got to think about it from a woman's standpoint. A woman being pregnant and wanting to tell that to the world. It's like, you know, it's an exciting thing for them. And then... Here comes Hollywood Unlocked. Whoosh. Hey guys, this is what's happening. She was mad. I we we were we were both not happy about that. You were Jason. mad at me too. I, I just was like, damn. Like I don't remember. Did you leak that she was pregnant or was it the photo shoot? I leaked that she did a pregnancy photo shoot. So it was kind of both, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, you had leaked that, and you know, it was like. So our, our first kid together, so we just felt like that was something we wanted to put out when we wanted to, and then it was like, here comes Jason and Hollywood Unlocked. That hurt. Okay, well, I apologize to you, David. I'm sorry. And you know what, though? At least we, see, and I'll tell you, it got really weird, so I just stopped calling Safari, because I didn't want to bother you while you were with her, you know, because I wanted to respect that you, you were her man, you were in her life, you were her baby dad, you were her husband. Y'all got married. Mm-hmm. So when you saw her, you thought you saw forever. Yeah, I'm not. I'm. I'm not gonna lie. It was um, head over heels in love. Yep. But sometimes, you know, if something doesn't work out, it could just be the timing of the situation. But that doesn't mean that it's you know not meant to be. But she said in an interview that you never loved her. Was that her just mad because you left her? And she still wanted you? I don't know. Like, you know, when, when, when women... Sometimes being emotional and going through something and, and a breakup and you being able to talk, you just, you just say some stuff that just don't necessarily make sense. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? But... That definitely wasn't the truth. Like, um, to say that I didn't love her, that's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't get married and have kids with somebody you don't love. Two kids. Two kids, you know what I'm saying? And even to this day, like, I still love her. But, um, you know, sometimes some things are better apart. Sometimes it's better together. Sometimes you just need a break. But, you know, who knows? I don't know. So you're leaving the window open that you would go back or could go back? No, no, not about going back or whatever, but I'm just saying it's like you ever love somebody and be like, yo, I love you, but I know that um, this could potentially 
not be good for this time right now. Every you know what I'm saying? Every 30 days. Every 30 days. Damn, you're busy. But two kids is like a real investment and marriage. Yeah. Because when you guys first got together and you got married, and you guys did it on TV, mm-hmm. I thought it was like... Not real? When you first got together, I was like, because I know you and I know her. Uh-huh. I know you to be nice, driven, business driven, like always happy, at least outwardly, you know, mm-hmm. always happy, good guy, everybody likes you. She, people's opinions crazy, uh, um, unpredictable. Every, everybody says everybody's crazy. You no, know? no, 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 no. Unpredictable, wild, um, we, we, you know, may yell out monkey here or there. I don't know. Like, you know, very. This guy is absolutely nuts. Oh, my so, God. So when I first heard y'all got together, I said, first of all, I said, great TV. Mm-hmm. This ain't real. And then y'all got engaged and then got married. I said, oh, this is the ultimate hustle. And then the kid, I was like, okay, it's real. And then the second kid, I was like, oh, he ain't playing. Then the divorce, I was like. Yeah, you know, it's it sucks because, you know, nobody gets married and says, I'm getting married to get a divorce. You know what I'm saying? Especially after having two kids. But, you know, um, everything in life is really a learning experience. Sometimes you could say, you know what, I want to be with someone. I just don't want to be married to them. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Because sometimes the marriage, it it just changes things, mm-hmm. you know, and... That's why the divorce rate is just so high right now. Mm-hmm. But um, honestly, I don't regret nothing I did. Cause um, I know how I felt before everything got to what it ended up like. Why did you leave? It wasn't really, um, she filed and when she filed, I just was like, okay, fine. But she didn't file and really mean it. She filed because she wanted me to, like, you know. Try to fight. Fight for it. Yeah. And I, I didn't do that. And I, I just felt like um, I just probably mentally in my life, just within myself, I just was not feeling like myself and, like, how I feel, like, right now. Like, if I was feeling like how I feel right now, just mentally, who knows where things would be right now. hmm and I, I think living in Atlanta had a lot to do with it. I, I, I wasn't happy mentally living in Georgia. You weren't? Georgia's, Georgia's not a happy place. I just... What, what part of it didn't make you happy? Because people would say, oh, it's the black Hollywood. It's, it's nah, the- but yeah, that's, that's for small-minded people who just want to care about going to functions and events and doing all of this extra shit. When, when I was living there, every celebrity's house in Atlanta was getting robbed every two days. Mm-hmm. Like, that's all they were doing, you know? It was a huge crime ring doing all of that shit, but all them guys got caught. They got a Rico, they all in jail, but it's changed a lot since then. Mm-hmm. But Miami's better hmm. for me mentally. So you're now celebrating two years since your divorce. Yeah, it's been two years. Is it two you or were three? married in October 2019, and you were divorced March 2022. Damn, this guy know more than me. I'm bad with dates. I feel like I'm sitting here talking to like a therapist. This is like a therapy session. I'm just here letting some things out. I think I've heard that out. before, right? Well, first of all, we want to say happy divorce. Wow. They're really clapping in the background, too. These guys are nuts. Here's a cake. Congratulations. What the... Divorced as fuck? <laughs> Listen, I'm, I'm only blowing this because it's on fire. I'm not celebrating being divorced because I love my children's mother and my kids still, no matter what the situation may be. But um, God, just keep blessing every union that I'm a part of, friends, family, everybody. You know, this cake is starting to look like a person that I could vent to. Um, I appreciate you for where you've taken me in life. Um, You know, we have a connection that somehow we just can't let go of. And 
I really think you're an amazing person individually. We may not be good for each other right now, but at one point in life, we could be. And um, I love you, I care about you, and no matter what, I got your back. Cake is vegan too. Uh, well, clap it up for the cake connection. What the hell did I just do? Give it a speech to this damn cake. This, oh, I cannot believe I'm in here talking to You've given to a two cake. speeches so far. You gave one for the Mandingo Award and now one for your divorce cake. Wow. This is a meaningful experience over here. Okay, so you're, so you're single and now you're co-parenting. How is co-parenting between you two? Um, co-parenting. Um, You know, Erica, she's she's a great mother. Like, even if we don't see eye to eye just as far as it's being a relationship and stuff like that, I don't I don't regret having kids with her at all. Um, my kids, they're beautiful as hell, and she goes hard. Um, and I'm, I'm, I want to really just go hard to really be the best I can be just as far as being a father and I'm about to really like, you know, just lay off the grid and just really dive into that. Like I got some, you know, things going on that I'm grateful for. I thank God I'm able to make money and I don't have to say that I'm safari to make the money and it's some shit where I could show for a while and just really focus on just locking in with my kids. Mm. So... Uh, Safari is an entrepreneur, as you all know. Hollywood Unlocked, I launched a division called Healthcare Unlocked, getting healthcare out to the masses because a lot of people who look like us don't know that there's affordable options out there for them. I launched mm -hmm. Healthcare Unlocked to wake it up for people, but I called him about it and you had already beaten me to it. Uh, yeah. And y you're in the healthcare business. And why did you, so talk about that and why you decided to get into the healthcare industry. Um, so I got a friend. Um, don't laugh at his name. His name is Whitey. So he's been a part of the business. and he's, Is he white? He's black as hell. Okay. His name but is Whitey. Is Whitey? Yeah. Okay. So it's, it's like a Jamaican thing. So, you know, Jamaican people will call whatever you are, that, that would be your nickname. Yeah. Like you, they'll call you Fish <laughs> or... First of all, they don't call me Fish. That, this is going viral because he's being an asshole. Stop playing with me. No, I'm not saying like, Stop. all right, let's say, boom, he got dreads. Yo, dread. Yeah, but you. Yo, white man. You, you calling me fish. You calling me fish for strategic. You're funny. No, you got, I'm just saying strike like. Strike number two. No, like whatever they see. Like if they see somebody walking with a limp, yo, broke foot. Listen, the other day I was on South Beach and I was talking to a guy who wanted to interview me and I said, what's your name? He said, Blackie. And he was really dark skin. I said, I'm not talking yeah, to you. Yeah, that's I'm what not, I'm saying. I'm not going to be called a colorist talking to you as Blackie. He goes, well, that's my name. I go, well, why didn't they name you something different? He goes, that is it. I go, I don't feel comfortable. But yeah, I get it. I get it. <laughs> yeah, but um, now nah, as far as the, um, the health insurance, so I, I met Whitey. He's been working with, um, funny enough, his branch was under and... He um, started his, um, he wanted to start a branch and needed some starter bread. And then when I like was with him for a while, just spending some time and just learning the business and seeing like what's, what's in it, what these people are getting, I just was like, man, I'm about to lock in with this so I don't gotta be getting on planes, flying and going to clubs and doing all these booking. I, I, I turn shit down now because I just, don't even like leaving my crib. Mm -hmm. I just like staying home. But um, which by the way, I Facetimed you. The crib is big. It's nice. Yes, thank you. Yeah, like, and low key, like, I, it's like I do fly shit, and I don't even show it no more. Back in the day, I used to want to show and had to show everything I'm doing. Like, I bought my dream house. Nobody knows. I ain't taking a picture. I'm not doing videos, and I'm not going on podcasts and saying, "Hey guys, this is what I'm doing. Come do this." Blah blah blah. Now nah, I want to get my money, make it be low, and stay out the way. But um, the, the the health insurance business, he I learned it, and I partnered up with him, and um, he's it's it's doing great. Mm. I'm grateful for it. And you're helping people get healthy. 
helping thousands of people get health insurance. A lot of people don't know that you're eligible to get health insurance if you make under 50000 a year and you don't got to pay for nothing. Right. Zero dollars. Yeah, zero dollars. Oinsurance.com. Yeah, it's really crazy. And that's why when we launched Healthcare Unlock, so far we've, we've signed up about 10,000 people, but we, we, you know, my goal is to sign up a million people. Mm -hmm. I want to get a million Americans healthier. And when I found out you were doing it, and just even you putting me up on game two, I really feel like we got to do more of that, where we're sharing in each other's yes. experiences and information, because that's how we get stronger together. Why do you feel like sometimes our people are so competitive, where we don't want to share resources, we don't want to share relationships or information? It's just, a, you know, unfortunate, it's just a crab in the bucket urban mentality. Um, you know, with uh, black people, they just, sometimes it's more fun to just pull each other down in some people's eyes and, and knock a hustle without even really knowing what's going on and really understanding it. But anybody around me in real life, like, I push people to get it. I motivate people. If I got something that's lit and I know it's a short thing, I, um... I put people on to, like, where's my phone? Let me show you this thing right here, right? Um, where this thing at? Boom, right? So this account right here, I started this with $100,000, right? Mm. And look at what it's at right now, the second to last number. What is this? That's something else I put you on to. Wait, is that a number right there? The mm. one the one number? Yeah. That's a, that one? Yeah. Put me on to that. I'll put you on to that. That's what I'm saying, like, I do the TV thing, I'm entertaining, ha-ha, funny, but I don't got to say, yeah, nigga, I'm getting money, blah, 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 show niggas, all this other extra. I just think it's just so childish. I want to get it. I don't even want niggas to know I'm getting it like right, that. Right. But that shit right there, I'm going to put you onto it. That shit is lit. Listen, but one, it's in part because you're Jamaican and y'all have like 20 jobs. But yeah. two, I've always said you're an entrepreneur, your hustles, you, I've always seen you hustling. You just have always been that guy. Um, do, do, do you not tell, but don't you feel like you not telling people is partly why you don't get the credit? Yeah, but you know what? I'm in such a place mentally that I don't give a shit about credit from people because I know what like I'm really doing in real life. I know like what I'm pulling up into and I just know my comfortability of living and I'm, I'm grateful for it. I thank God for everything and where I'm able to be at because... I wasn't always here, you know what I'm saying? And um, I tell the people that I feel like would take it serious. Like that thing I just showed you, that's something I know. I'd be like, yo, Jay, put this in there. Your return is going to be stupid. Mm -hmm. You're going to be, you'll be making 70% on your bread every month. Mm -hmm. Okay, so do you do reality show just to keep your name out there to leverage that to do other moves? The reality show shit, it's... um. It's free money. Like, you know how it is. Yeah. Leave your house, go somewhere, film for an hour or two, and then I'm back home. That ain't no job. Yeah. Like, I used to have to drive garbage trucks, school buses. I had, like, every job under the sun in America to really get bread. So I used to have to work hard. So now that I'm able to, like, leave my crib, do this, and make bread, and I'm never going to be like, ah, yeah, I ain't doing that no more. Nah, I remember what I used to have to do to make bread. Mm -hmm. So... I, I know you can relate. Oh, no, for we sure. Can't, we can't never forget where we came from, and I'm not losing the value of a dollar. So Amber Rose was here recently, and she said she believes she deserves $20 million from Dark Twisted Fantasies. How much money do you believe Nicki Minaj owes you for all the songs that you were just in the studio as her boyfriend helping her out with? Honestly, um, just seeing where it's at now, whether people know anything or not, you know, it's, it's, it's good to see that the shit is still lit, you know? She's on a world tour, and it's, it's still up. Selling out arenas, that's dope. And Amber was there when we were in Hawaii, so she's not lying. And I do remember Amber was, like, saying she was the one who told Kanye to put her on the track. It was the four of us out there. I remember that part. But you, why don't you ever feel like, do you feel like it's wrong to feel like you owe, are owed something? It's just that what I've learned, and now where I'm at with the healthcare unlocked and the running for office and all that, is that... What do you mean running for office? I ran for office. I won the primary. I'm going to be a city councilman back in my hometown. I moved back to Stockton. You from... Stockton. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, I'm here, like, I'm here part-time for work now, but I live in Stockton. 
For real? Yeah. My condo in Miami, I rarely get to see now because... I, I remember when you was there and I was talking to you. Yeah. 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 So, like, I, I'm, I'm now, like, re even, like, all the jewelry and all that, like, what you were saying, like, what we used to do, I'm not, I've done it already. Exactly. I don't need to do it anymore. And, I, and I'm in a place now where, I, like, the things that matter are the things that drive purpose, not, you know, all the other stuff. But, yeah, now you can't get Jason Lee to do nothing unless he's getting paid or service to my community. Boom. Um, where is shit at? I, let me see. I bought this two days ago, but I ain't going to post it and tell nobody. Oh, that's fire. I want one of those. Yeah. Yeah, that's a Miami vehicle for sure. Is that yours? Yeah. The how, hell? Much, how much was that? Four fifty. Thousand. Okay. I got a, uh, you know what? One of my friends said to me, he said, Safari, you need to let people know what time it is with you. He said, you're too humble. But my mother always says, what does my mother always say? Don't Sorry, tell, that. Mommy, don't I don't tell the IRS. No, she says something about the humble cow drinks the goat milk last. I'm sorry, I don't think that's it. The humble cow drinks the goat milk? No, yeah. she said the humble cow drinks the milk last. I'm, I'm told, I don't even know, I'm sorry. You can be humble, but you can stunt a little bit. Nah, but this year, I'm just like, you know, these, this, what is this, March? The first four months, I'm just like, you know, boom, boom, boom. Yeah. When springtime comes, I'm a, um, we're going to go up or not. So that video when Erica Mena found out that she won custody but didn't get no child support and she was crying, was it because she knew how much money you were making? And no, we have joint custody. That's another thing with that. People seeing that and just think, oh, well, we, we have joint custody. And um, I don't know. You know, I feel like um, cameras heighten situations. You, you, you think so? What do you of think? Of course. Like... You can be getting news or talking to somebody and a camera being there, like, it's so weird with me. Like, whenever I talk and there's cameras on me, and if I'm talking about certain things, it'll make me so emotional. I don't know if it's a camera, but then if I'm just home and just whatever, it's like, whatever, but it's weird. It's like, it just kind of makes me feel more vulnerable. Mm -hmm. So when she was that emotional and she had filed for the divorce and then the divorce went through and then she found out that she was awarded the divorce, but she wasn't guaranteed any I think child support was a thing when you saw that video what did you think I, I didn't um I didn't think nothing I just was like I wish we weren't going through this mm -hmm. you know like I don't want I don't want to see her cry I don't want to see her cry whether it has anything to do with me or not and, um but you could still be in love with somebody but not be with them mm -hmm. and I feel like um me and her, our thing is like we love each other, but we just know like, damn, we love each other, but this shit is toxic. But do you like being with famous girls? Because you dated Neo's ex-wife, Crystal, too, right? <sighs> My God, bro, this guy is crazy. First of all, um... I'm just trying to establish the type of girl you like, because you don't like like the girl from Jack in the Box. No, so. let me tell you something. I love a regular girl. Like, regular girls that are under the radar that people don't know. Like, see, people just see the shit that are out there with somebody else because they're out there. But I've been in situations with people that don't nobody know about. You know what I'm saying? So, um, a lot of shit be speculation too. Just being with someone or being around, they'll be like, "Oh, okay, so that's what's going on." But so Crystal was not a thing. No, um, <laughs> no, me like, damn, this drink is strong. <laughs> drink up. Um, no, because I love Crystal. I know Crystal. Yeah, no, Crystal. Crystal's amazing. She's a she's a nice ass person. So amazing. why didn't you guys make it official? Um, damn, Jason. It's crazy how you don't remember everything when it comes to, like, the stuff you don't want to talk about. No, um, I just, I'm just trying to remember, like... How it ended? How it started? Nah, it, 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 it kind of... Did Neo find out that y'all were dating? I'm saying she, she's, um... She's divorced, number one. And number two, no. Me and I was just, like, friends. You know what I'm saying? No. 
Yeah. I don't know what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, we were just friends. Okay. So you guys never dated? No, me and her, we were just cool. Like... You're supposed to be cool with the people you date. No, uh, I'm just saying, like, we're friends. Okay. All right, cool. Still or no? Still no what? You guys are still friends? Yeah. Okay. You killing me, Jason! <laughs> you killing me! <laughs> I spent 10 years! <laughs> 10 years! And this how you do me? Is this thing on? Is this thing on? Y'all killing me, Jason! You killing me! Wait, so Shannon Sharp, when you saw him get out that car with that green outfit on, did you see it? No. Nah. Oh. You... I, I, I saw it, but I didn't understand it. What were people trying to say about it? I mean, hips don't lie. No, I just saw like a picture of it, but I, and they were like, it said like, what's wrong with this? And then <laughs> I didn't understand. It, it must have went over my head. Yeah. I mean, my community felt it was a little amusing. But what, I don't, I don't get it. What was wrong with um, His clothes were a little tight. You know, his, the way he was shifting a little bit was a little specific. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's the olive green, I don't know. Hey, look, I've seen the background look like this before when I watch um, other interviews on this show. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, this is when we know we're getting into some shit. It's getting dark. Oh, yeah, that liquor. Keep drinking. Okay, so um, when you saw the Cat Williams interview on Shannon Sharp's show, he, Shannon won't see this interview because he blocked us. But Why? You, I don't know. I think I said, hey, sis, or something. I don't know. Ugh. Either way, I think he's getting into a world of media that he's never really been in. Yeah, this, is, this shit is different. This is different, you mm -hmm. know, than, you know, CNN or ESPN. This is you getting into the... You're getting into the mix of things, right? Uh -huh. And once that internet starts going and you have 50, 60 million views on an interview like Cat Williams, it yeah. opens it up to people having opinions and wanting to be messy. Of course. So he wasn't used to it, I think. Yeah, and he's coming from a complete different world. He's an athlete. So I can get that. Yeah. Okay, so when you saw that interview, what, what did you think? The Cat Williams yeah. thing? Yeah, it was, it was entertaining. He was on tilt. He was on 100. My ne the next time I do an interview with you, I'm going I'm to get to the Cat Williams level of wherever he was at mentally. I don't it think you'll ever get there. I know. I, don't even, I just said that. I made that up. Why not? Is it because you don't, you just, you're just you in a peaceful place in your life? Yeah. Like, I'm just so, like, like, it's just crazy. Like, I don't be understanding, like, people who, like, let's say you got kids and then it's like you go out and you're just doing all this other, like, this outrageous unnecessary bullshit and then you go home and play with your kids and it just doesn't add up to me you know what i'm saying you gotta i'm just at such a cool calm peaceful like place in my life bigfoot what bigfoot bigfoot what are you talking about bigfoot oh we both have on the air force ones what size shoe you wear 13. Me too. You were 13? Yeah, we have big feet. Okay, Bigfoot. So when that song dropped. Oh my God. <laughs> this guy is crazy. Yo. That, that, that went over my head. Okay. When the song dropped, um, what did you think about it? Did you, did you think like, damn, she got her? Or did you think, mm, I could have wrote something better than that? No, I didn't think that at all. Look. I get her sense of humor. Like, she has a sense of, like, I, I get it. So, like, I totally, I get it. But it, there's nothing funny in battle rapping. There's nothing funny in, like, a diss track. Nas and Jay-Z, when they did Ether and whatever Jay did, wasn't positioned to make people laugh. It's not a comedy show. Mm. Right? Damn. I don't even know... What that was over. Like, I'm out the loop for that. Mm. Also, too, I took a super social media cleanse from, like, last year, August. I forgot what I was doing. I think I was doing all the insurance shit, and I just was like, yo. You were locked in. Yeah, and I, I, I gave my login to this dude, and I was like, yo, run my shit for, like, six months. Let me just get off of this shit. Mm. And I just got back on this shit. And that's because I'm like, got some shit to drop. 
So you didn't hear the song or you did? I heard the song. Did you like it? I I, I like I me and I'm telling me and her have the same sense of humor, so I got it. Like that everybody doesn't have the same sense of humor, so like I know when I know when someone's being funny and I know when someone's serious. Let me ask you a question, because I just thought of this. You would know because you were A and R and the others back in the day. When people say that she took little Kim's swag when you were developing the brand that you all were, and this is no shade, this is just asking, in the creative process of developing whatever, uh, Nikki has given credit to Nick, to Lil' Kim in the past, and people either didn't acknowledge or didn't hear it or didn't see it. Mm-hmm. Lil' Kim has felt that she stole her sound when she was over there with Baby. When she was in the development of the Nicki Minaj brand, was Nikki, was Lil' Kim like the blueprint for her? Or for what you guys were building? No, I, at first I wouldn't say you guys were building. Everything with her just happened organically how it's supposed to happen. Like you, I don't know, sitting there and really trying to build and piece and put something together and say, hey, we're gonna do this, this, this. Like she different. That's why she, you know, is where she is. Still could set out arenas all these years later. Mm-hmm. So. So Little Kim was never a part of the blueprint. No, nah, nobody was ever a thought to say, "Hey, let's make it be like this." You know what I'm saying? You could pay, you know, homage, and oh, I know some people hate when black people say homage. I'm supposed to say homage. Homage. Yeah, to pay homage to certain people, and it's like, all right, cool. It's just out of respect. But um, I mean, you got to give her the credit for doing the work. She of did course, the work, and yeah, she's she, talented. Yeah. Yeah. Course. I mean, I've always said she was talented, and I've always said she deserved a Grammy. I don't know why she hasn't gotten it. Well, it's a popularity contest, I would assume, but... Well, the, the, the whole, the Grammys, that shit is just... Nothing about their um, judging system makes sense. So do you think you and Nikki should have won a Grammy by now? <laughs> Yo, this guy is crazy. Hold on, this is 2024? So, damn. That mean I'm gonna be back in 2034. <laughs> you're paying four thousand dollars a month in child support, but you have money in this healthcare. You're making so much money. No, I'm not. But um, is is that a, is that considered a lot? I ain't gonna lie. A lot of people, they're so like, oh my god, you're paying that in child in child support, and you got. What do you think? Is that a lot or a little or? Like- I mean. For somebody like you who's co-parenting, like when I called you, your kids were at your house. So they're with you. It's not like your kids are not there with you and you're not taking care of them. Mm -hmm. I think having to pay. Uh, I I get that part. You know what I mean? I feel like if your kids are actively in your life, you're actively taking care of them. They ain't, daddy, daddy, give me something. You're giving them whatever they want. I don't understand why you have to pay. But that's why our community don't have that problem. Shit, nigga, you can't, you ain't having no kids. You want kids? I don't know, not today, because I have two dogs that are just always sitting right there. Like, I'm imagining your kids, but you feel different when you have kids. Does it change you? Does father, did fatherhood change you? Um, yeah, of course. Like, um, you know, when I have to, like, go away to work and stuff, and it's so crazy, I be thinking because my daughter is a kid and she's a kid and she just cares about whatever's in front of her. Like, like one day she FaceTimed me and because I couldn't be there to like go to where she was at, she started crying and I was like, wow. It was just so interesting to me. Cause I used to be like, ah, they're just kids, they don't care. They just wanna play or be around whoever's giving them attention in that very instant. And that moment changed me as far as thinking like that. So did you get emotional? Like, it, it, like it, are you like a girl dad? Yeah, like when I when I when I have my daughter, I'm hugging her and kissing her nonstop, and she's just. I I just low key still can't believe I have kids. I'm not even gonna lie, <laughs> it hasn't even like registered. Where I'm like, yeah, I got two kids. Like even when I gotta say I have kids, it's like I just, I can't believe it because in my head I'm still very like, a young free spirit. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So. I mean, you are you're four, you're 42. Yeah. I mean, you're a lot younger than me, but, you know, you get How old are you? 46. I'll be 47 this year. You age well. When's your birthday? August 16th. What's that, Leo? Yep. No wonder. Cancer and Leo. Cancers and, and Leos get along. Mm-hmm. But cancers are typically emotional. Everybody says that, and 
it's like emotional in what sense? Like anytime I say, oh, I'm a cancer to somebody, I'd be like, yo, um, and they're like, oh, y'all so emotional. I don't, everyone's emotional. I'm not. You don't cry? Um, I get emotional when I think about like, now, now with like my community back home, when I'm like meeting with families who are struggling, when I think about my brother and all of what I've been through, yes. But yeah. like, do I get emotional when people, no. Yeah, but me too. Yeah. I, I get emotional when I think about like things from my past. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I'm not just gonna be there with someone and just, they're crying, then I start crying. Yeah. Um, was Erica, Erica's a Gemini, huh? She gotta be a Gemini. No, she's a Scorpio. Scor oh, really? Yeah. That's where that passion comes from. Yeah, she, she, she loves hard. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I like her, I, I hate her less than I hate Jocelyn, but I do like the time I was friends with Erica. Like, Erica was fun, she's fiery, she's, she's great for TV. You know, I know she doesn't so like- So what, you're, you're not friends with Jocelyn? Oh like, my God. We got we to gotta mend all oh, these. Oh, no, 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 She's the only human being not welcome in this studio. She would tear it up. She doesn't know how to behave. There's not a kennel big enough for Jocelyn Hernandez. I'm sorry. No. Sorry. No. No. And if she behaves the way she behaved at the Floyd Mayweather fight, I will make sure Dade County puts her under the jail. She believes, she can't even get to a halfway house the way she behaves. Are you crazy? Amber was here and said how she beat her up. Oh, I forgot that. about that. Okay, anyway, we'll move Damn. on. Hate violence. So what, so, what, um, so what excites you these days? You're making money, you're on TV, you're a dad. You're what excites me is I love peace and I love amazing, crazy throat. Like, I'm talking about throat to the point where I'm soaked in spit and I need two towels to be underneath Hold me. Hold on, I took a sip and I, I thought you said throat. Like, somebody sucking on your penis? I was thinking that but didn't mean to say that. That's, I don't even know why the hell I said that. I was not what I... You know what me and you have in common? <laughs> it has nothing to do with the throat thing, sorry. <laughs> what? No, you know what you and I have in common? What? We both had sex in a Burger King bathroom. Bro, I was 16 years old. How the hell do you know that? Your way right away. Damn, this guy is nuts. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know. Um, crazy. I was in Miami too. Shout out to Burger King in Miami. Um, so you like Amazing Throat. Like, who was the last person that gave you some? You know what? I've been focusing on myself and self-love. So I've been practicing abstinence. And, you know, things like that just aren't important to me right now. Have you ever practiced semen retention? Because people keep telling me, like, that's a thing. I'm not going to tell you what celebrity recently told me that they're practicing semen retention. They haven't had sex, no masturbation. They've done nothing for like over a year. Shocking. And what does that do exactly? I, it, it, well, they do shrooms too. So they're having like a whole euphoric experience of like more energy, more life, more happiness. You know, you, you know what I just found out about? And it is, I think, one of the most amazing things on the face of this earth that I can't believe I just found out about it. What? Poppers. Okay, listen. Okay, let's do a disclaimer. In our community, we've known about poppers. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's so funny you said this because I just had another straight guy yesterday try to turn me on the poppers when I already know what they are. But in our community, we use them different than the way you guys use them. How did you find out about poppers? Yo. It's, well, it was definitely a, it was a girl. And um, it's just, it's just, that shit is incredible. It makes you feel like you're outside of your body looking at your body. And you're just, it just, it's an out of body experience without taking drugs, I feel like. See, this was something that our community discovered first. So now your community 
is going to take it and commercialize and act like you discovered it. You're the, this is the Christopher Columbus of the sexual experience. Yo, but point. see, the thing in y'all world, y'all be like, that should be like a secret. I'm trying to remember. So Bobby was on this show mm -hmm. talking about poppers. If you missed Bobby here talking about poppers, this is what he said. What happens when you, because I've never. Look, never I fake it. I don't use that. What, you so, don't? Here, let me open Wait, it right why do here. I need to open up? Well, I need, my top's taking some time, too. Wait, no, no, don't do it now. Wait, don't do it now, because if, if you pour poppers right on now. the damn... I'm not. Okay. Wait, so is there liquid you. in there, or what is it? <laughs> Wait, your asshole's going to open up on the show. Oh! Wait. I'm you, ready! Wait, can you explain what poppers is for people who are watching and don't know? <sighs> <sighs> he basically said that it, he uses it to make his ass loose. But see, I, I heard that about it where they're like, oh, you know, gay guys use it for for that. And I'm just like, well, I'm not using it for that, but it just gives me the, it just, every your whole body just feels insane. Really? Yes. Like ecstasy, or not ecstasy, but like, like what? It's just a crazy, it's a crazy like blood rush. Mm. And I feel like it's pretty safe. Yeah, well, it's not a drug. Yeah, and it doesn't go in your system. Doesn't go in your system. It's not a needle. Nope. You're not smoking it. You're not even in, you're not even snorting it. I mean, you're smelling it, but you're not like it's not digesting in your system. Yeah, that shit. But it got to be a special person. So like, who was the last special person? Do you remember? Well, of course I remember. Um so nobody that's sucking on your penis right now is even worth mentioning or claiming public is what you're saying. So whoever's watching who just did it should know that when they're down there, like they should say a prayer because they mean nothing to you. Wow, it's crazy. Throat poppers is crazy. <laughs> a throat popper? What is that? I'm just saying, get, getting throat while Wait, on poppers. Didn't you make a penis... Um, the mold? Mold? Yeah. So you were selling your penis online? Mm, yeah. Did that do well for you? It did, but I'm not even gonna lie, the, um, that deal, it just, it wasn't worth it. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't have did it. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't have did it. I, I should have did it independently as opposed to going through one of the, if not the biggest sex toy company in America. Was that Johnson? Or? Doc Johnson, yeah. Oh. Well, now, what is the process of molding your penis? Do you have to go in and make it, get an erection, and get an actual mold of it? So, yeah, and they're out here in LA. Um, yeah, they're right down the street. Yeah, they got a huge warehouse. Their facility is huge. So you go. No, pause. And then um, the ladies there mixing the clay. And there's some old lady, too. She's there mixing the clay. And she's looking at you and she's like. I'm like. Wait, but are you naked while she's doing it? You kind of like, you just there and they're like, they're just like, you got to get ready. Get ready for this clay to be all over your meat. So then, they, when it goes on you, this is the thing now. As opposed to getting throat, you're still there growing large, girthy, having a long, great day. But when this clay is on you, you're not getting throat anymore. So then you wait, 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 not getting throat anymore. How do you get the erection to get the clay put on? It's you, are, are you you could bring somebody there with you. I remember they tried to give me some pill. They tried to give me a pill. But um, I had somebody with me when I went. She was, you know, was a very supportive, great person. You, you know? brought somebody with you to give you head so you can get an erection to get the mold of your penis made for distribution. Yeah, cause she, she believed in the dream. Yeah. I was gonna say something that would go so viral, but I'm not gonna do it because I'm running for office. Okay, so, good. so she, so was the old lady that was making the clay, was she right there when the girl was doing this? Nah, you kinda like, there's like a bathroom or whatever, so it's like, you do it, boom, 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 and then like, as soon as you step out the door, you just did, and she just takes all the clay and just goes, boom. So the old lady that was stirring the clay, she did it? Yeah. And, like, are you looking at her in her eye when she's doing this, or are you looking away? Well, I, I'm saying I'm looking, and the clay is, like, warm. 
But then it's like, you don't really look her in her eye because then you got to kind of try to be like, okay, let me concentrate so I don't shrivel up fast and you just got to think and wonder and pretend and daydream. And then it takes, I forgot how long it took to like harden up. And then they pull it and it's... That's a whole process. Yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy. So did the lady ask for your number? Or like, do you never see her again? No, she just wanted to make sure that she got all the veins. So she was there like, I need to make sure I get all the veins, all the veins. And I was like, what? And she was dead serious. Older lady too. And then um, they do it and then they like kind of like make the veins thicker. And then they ship you a your penis to show you here's the product. No, I didn't even do all that. Then they went, I took a picture, made the boxing, and then um So that's the one thing you regret doing. You wish you never did that. Yeah. If there was like, you know, and I'm not somebody who really, you know, lives with too many regrets, but that's something I'm like, ah, uh, I could have did without. Hmm. Okay, so are you done with love and hip hop? Um, we just wrapped this season. Miami, um, right now, as a matter of fact, I got to go tomorrow, finish up green screen and all that. And th that shit don't stop. Mm. It's probably going to be a month break and then we back at it. When, when your daughter fell on the show and they didn't cut it out, mm -hmm. that pissed you off? I wouldn't say it pissed me off because, like, she fell, babies fall all the time. And when my kids fall, no matter what happened, once they're safe... It's funny to me. I laugh. Mm -hmm. Like, they're kids. She didn't hurt herself. And um, it's not like laughing like, ha, ha, ha. It's like a, I'm in shock. Oh, shit. You know what I'm saying? Well, some people have nervous laughs. I mean, that's just. Yeah, you know. it's kind of like, it's kind of like that. Yeah. But don't you hate when reality TV, specifically Love and Hip Hop, and you've invested a lot in the franchise, don't edit you to make, they edit you to make you look a certain way? Yeah, or I ain't gonna lie. That, that's why, too, like, even my mother, she hates that I do, like, do the show. Because she's like, yo, that's not even you. You don't even get to show you. You go, you can sit there and talk for an hour or two. And then they just chop it and make whatever okay. they want it to be for three yeah. minutes. Well, that's what I say. You're highly entertained on the show, but you're not who you are in real life is not you on the show. 100%. I'm 100% a character when I'm on that but show. But you know how to make it work for you. I mean, that's really what reality TV is. Yeah. If, it, if you weren't entertaining, nobody would watch you. Exactly. And people just, whether it's good or bad, people like to talk about me. When Erica called um, Spice a monkey or said the monkey, what'd you mm -hmm. think? Um... I... I I just wish that that shit just never happened. Like that, just you know, that was a um, that was a rough time for the family. So you know, you having two brand new kids and just two women arguing, and someone's hearing just anything about their kids, and then it just goes left. So you know, um, I just I wish it never happened. Is Erica racist? No way. No. That was just, all right, it, it's not about being racist, but you, she has a mouth on her, and that's not a secret, you yeah. know? And But that's what they signed her up for, because they know she has the mouth on her. Yeah, and then it's like, no matter in what light, if, when you got kids and your kid is brought up, no matter what, if it's not a, your kid is beautiful or whatever, no matter what, it's like, Yo, people just lose it, mm -hmm. you know, so. So you understood? I just, n not really understood, it's just like, yo, some people just, just say shit and it doesn't necessarily mean that they feel a way against, you know, certain people, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, you and Spice used to be really close, are you still close? Nah, we, we, and we, we, still, we still cool, we still straight. Yeah, because you guys have music together too, right? No, nah, I never did a song well. But you performed together. Yeah. Yeah. We was always doing shows, her dancers jump on me and all of that crazy shit. But you know, it um that's that situation it definitely changed the dynamic of our relationship too, mm -hmm. you know? Because um of course this is the mother of my children and then, you know, Spice is somebody that I'm cool with and I've known for a long time, so <sighs> Yeah.
Are you still passionate about music? Honestly, the music shit, it's like, I want to make money. The music shit, it's like, I, I show me the money. Mm -hmm. Like, there's a lot of people out there who are doing the music, and it's like, they're just doing it because they want to look like they're doing something, but they're not making no money from it. It's a handful of people who are really making money doing music, and there are people who are doing music and then struggling. You know what I'm saying? Like, Literally, I feel like the music industry has built, like, I feel like it's built people to move product and sell shit, but it's not real. Like, there's people who are selling insurance, who are doing things, who are really getting money. Yo, yo, yo. We're not gonna tell everybody, but yeah, really, and have an impact in the world, and really being able to do it. Making M's a month. Yeah, a month. M's, not a year, M's, multiple, plural, a month. And you would not even know, and then you gotta, like the, the people in the music business, you got to put your life at risk, going to these dark ass clubs, going to these places to perform, promote a record, do all of this shit and just end up in these areas, going to cities that's not your city. Leaving your families. Number one, it's not worth it. Yeah. Mm. It's not. Would you ghostwrite for somebody else now that you're not ghostwriting for Nikki? I was never a ghostwriter, Jason Lee. So you were just like turning knobs and adding other sounds. Yo, I was. Uh, listen, I was a. Uh, um, I was a great cheerleader. I was a great supporter. I was a great like. Hey. You are the best. Period. That's that. I love the athletic analogy of being a cheerleader because you did talk about fumbling that relationship before. But you also gave lots of layups to different songs and situations that you weren't compensated for. And you don't want to talk about it because you moved on. That's great. I love the growth. I, I, I aspire to have that level of growth one day. For real. You, you, you know her? Y'all ever met? Yeah, we met. I mean, I'm not, we're not friends. She, oh. You know, she doesn't care. I've tried to, like, clear the air. I'm over trying to clear the air. I'm at a point in my life where happiness is a destination that you have to make for yourself. Mm -hmm. It's not about whether somebody going to join you on the destination or meet you there. It's I'm at a I'm at a peaceful place in life. But I have to ask the questions cuz you haven't been here in over 10 about 10 years and I've never Yeah, asked. I I feel like I'm talking to a new person. Yeah? Yeah. In what way? Not Oh my god, I got to watch what the hell I say talking to this guy. Meaning your growth and elevation. Yeah. As you. Yeah, from back in the day. Yeah. Before when you had your, your hair was like slicked down forward. Don't don't start. Okay. Like, All right. So what so what do you think in in your whole life as we've known you as a public person the biggest misconception of you has been? The biggest misconception is that um I'm a womanizer and I don't care about women and their feelings and that's the complete total opposite. Um, I was raised with all women. Anybody who knows me in real life, I'm one of the most respectful person on this earth when it comes to dealing with women, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And um, I just don't clear shit up. And it's like, for what? To who? I'm, I'm not running into y'all in the office that I'm in, so why do I need to clear some shit up to you? Mm -hmm. So y'all could just talk and, and leave comment. And when I say y'all, I'm just talking about yeah, the general the public. Stuff, yeah. yeah, like, that's why I, I hate when I see people grab the phone and they're looking at the phone and they're talking to it and they're expressing their stuff. Hey, yo, let me tell you something, guys. This is what really happened. Yo, talk to a fucking friend. Put the phone down. I hate when people do that shit. Facts. You don't got friends? Where are your friends at? I'm, I'm, look, whatever you see later on is because I'm, I'm talking to a person in real life, not strangers. Your middle name's Lloyd? Oh my God, this guy, you know, you should be a federal agent in, in um, I mean, Ohio. It's, it's not giving Lloyd. Lloyd is a, Jama is a very Jamaican middle name. Is it really? Yeah, Jama Lloyd, Lloyd is a Jamaican, yeah, the first name Lloyd, like, uh, Safari is Jamaican, and Safari is a spinoff of Rastafari, my parents are Rastafarian, mm. so. So I co-executive produced Bobby, I Love You, Perry, you were on there. What did you think about that show? That shit was wild as hell. <laughs> Bobby called me and said, yo, are you in Miami? I'm like, yeah. Um, he said, can you make an appearance on my show? I'm like, okay, I'm not doing nothing right now. He said, okay, cool, boom. 
and I pull up to a boxing ring, and that was <laughs> that was wild. They're really fighting for love. Yeah, and how long did it last? <laughs> a week. <laughs> but that's like you know our community. That's that's a long time. <laughs> yeah, y'all 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 live out. Is this cake really like a cake? Yeah, it's vegan. Is it good? What kind of cake is it? I don't know. I'm not divorced. <laughs> That's for divorced people. <laughs> like, I'm not touching that. Mm. I do want to get married, though. My only thing is, I, I know I want to get married because I want the wedding. But then, like, afterwards, we have to go home together, and that's the hard part. And let me tell you, you something. Know? There are, and I'm not talking about, you know, my situation, but there are women out there who want the wedding but don't want to focus on their marriage and the the um the foundation of it. Well, I know you don't want to talk about your situation, but was Erica one of those people? Nah, um, because I feel like I think it just didn't work out. I just feel like where where, where we were and just as far as the, st- the the stress of like you know our house that got broken into, um, you know. Nobody was home, thank God, but I was on the road. I was, you know, you know, when I go to my bookings and shit like that, girls are jumping on me and all that. You know how the Caribbean culture is. And, you know, it just was, it just hit different if you're home pregnant and then you, you know, you see that's what's going on. But I've been doing that forever. You know what I'm saying? It's it was, gang. Yeah, exactly. So it wasn't like no, it wasn't being hidden. I'm on public, I'm on stage, I'm just doing what I've always been doing, but then, you know, when women are pregnant and they they just go through emotions differently. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's get to the games. All right, so listen, here at the Jason Lee Show, we like to play games, you all know them. Uh, we're gonna start with smash or pass. Now, smash or pass is a game that I like to play where I just put up somebody that you may know and uh, you just say whether you smash or pass. On the side of your chair is a paddle. On one side is smash, on the other side is pass. Really simple game. You're, you know. Has, does every did Omarion do this? Yes, he did. Every guest plays this game. Okay. And you need to just be honest. So I, what I'd like you to do, if and if you don't do this right, I'm going to play a real messy game, and I have one lined up for you. I'm telling you right now, okay. we'll burn All the right. internet down. Okay. All right. All right. So the first person, she's a friend of yours, but keep it real simple. Spice. Come on, that's that's like my that's that's like family. I can't. Nah, this guy's crazy. What's up with this guy? I mean, I just thought maybe it would be a dance hall moment. Maybe you guys would. I don't know. Yeah, do something we, upside down or something. No. Oh. Okay. Okay. This next person's been. Uh, she's a friend of the show. Very nasty girl, um, Suki. Suki, that's family too. You ain't blood related to Suki. Me and Suki, yo, Suki's like, she's, yeah, we we mad cool. But Suki's with the good coochie. This just not a connection. Mandingo. Suki with no, the me and Suki. No, we like that's now nah, we cool. Okay, so that's a pass. Yeah. Okay, well this next person ain't a friend of yours, and she's a cougar. Abby Lee Miller. Who the hell is that? Dance mom. Who? <laughs> that's the dance mom. Oh hell, this guy is crazy. But she has. She definitely has AARP and. She is a cougar. She likes some young and feisty. How do you know? I know her. Abby's my homegirl. You said she's a dance mom? She's the dance mom instructor. Abby Lee Miller from Dance Moms, the most iconic reality dance instructor ever. Wow, I don't even know what the hell that is. I'm sorry. The throat game could be fire. Okay, so that's a pass? Yeah, I'm sorry, Abby. Okay, sorry, Abby. All right, what about this next person? Just met her recently on the red carpet at the Grammys. She is fire. She smells good too. She, yo, she, she I've been seeing her pop up on TikTok. She is fire. South African. Make me sweat, make me holla, make me lose my breath in your guala. Make me sweat, make me swallow, make me lose my breath, make me walla. Would you ghostwrite the remix to that? Would she, you collaborate if she wanted to get in the studio? Fire, I'll do a fire Jamaican verse on that shit. I'll do a fire Jamaican, yeah, yard my thing. So she's hot? She's bad. She's fire. So if Tyler gave you like 
an opportunity to do something, what would you want to do? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was just saying, you know, like, what's up? Okay. Uh, next one is a friend of the show. She's single, too. Evelyn Lozada. Evelyn's buyer. You know what? Smash is just such a harsh word. We could cut, like. Uh, there's another game I have lined up for you if you start playing with this game. <laughs> <laughs> so Evelyn's hot. Evelyn Spire. She Evelyn. made me grab her breast. What? While she was here. Yes. Yeah, see, that's you, though. That's <laughs> would you. you have done it? I don't think she would ask me to do that. But if she did? She asked me? Why not? You only live once. <laughs> YOLO. Okay. Uh, speaking of YOLO, this one just recently had a baby. She's hot, though. Sexy red. I, I look, I look, she, she reminds me of a, um, of like a family member. What? She, she reminds, like I have a like cousin, a cousin like I have a cousin yeah. in Jamaica and she like spitting image. Now that I look at her. I she definitely looks like she's Jamaican. I don't care what nobody said. After she, looking at her now, I could see my, my cousin Tasha in her a little bit. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Tasha looked like she ready to let you have it just like Sexy Red, too. Yeah, she... Her she, glow up... Her, I mean, her come up has been phenomenal to watch, right? She she changed the ratchet rap game for women. Like, her level of just ratchetness with... And just made it mainstream. She did. Yeah. Is Drake her baby daddy? <sighs> I doubt it. That's what they said. It was bullshit. Online rumors. People... I hate, I hate the internet. Okay. Uh, this woman is recently single, um, too. Nene Leakes. See, that's that's like a family member too. Nene is like a, you know that's, you know that's like a family member. Do you know you, Nene? N Have I ever met her? I don't think I've ever so met her. So she's like a distant family member that you've never met. Yeah, I don't know her. I never met her. I know Nene. Yeah, but I'm just saying she gives like. Nene got she got that body though. But see, I never seen her in person. You know, sometimes you see people in person and it's different. So she might could get it. So she's like a middle. Yeah, oh, there's a middle. Okay, man. Yeah. There's no middle, but I'll just give you that. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, why y'all put this next woman in here? She is married. Kelly Rowland. Look, she's married. I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna smash or pass her, but Kelly Rowland is one of the most beautiful she's, black women on the face of this earth. That new movie she just did with that the Tyler Perry movie, Mia Copa. That movie, yo, unbelievable. Cause well, bravo. Well, and just last month you did tweet that she's the most beautiful person on earth. Oh, that's what I was like. Damn, I thought that was random. No, she's she's beautiful. So you tweeted your lust for her, but you wouldn't say it in a game on a show. I didn't look. I watched the movie, and watching the movie, it made me look at her in a way like, yo, the sex scene. No, it wasn't even the sex scene. Just everything about her in that movie. It was like just fire. It wasn't even the sex scenes. Just her entire, just the way she embodied that role. It was just very um, admirable to watch. I really admired it. And you're, admired it. You're, and you're attracted to her. She's beautiful. And if she wasn't married, if she if she wasn't married, I, I would never run into her. I wouldn't see her. I've, I've never seen her in my life. I've met her several times. You live in Hollywood. Yeah. Okay. You want me to call her? No, I don't have her number. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, okay. Friend of the show and friend in real life. Tiffany Haddish, she's single. I know Tiffany. That's fam that's like a, you know. Like uh, family. Yeah. Yeah. She likes small penises anyway. For real? Yeah. Like Why? She's medium. She just said it just, she just prefers that. That's crazy. Yeah. She Girl doesn't want nobody with a Mandingo Hall of Fame award. I can tell you that right now. 
Damn, that's zany. Yeah, she wouldn't like it. No. Okay. Uh, this person, you guys can do a song together and Shinseya. Shinseya. Ah, Shinseya. Damn. I know Shinseya. Do you know her? Yeah, I know her. But Shinseya is fire. She ain't, ain't like a family member then. No, ain't, 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 no, ain't no family man on this earth. Ain't no straight man saying that's a family member. Shinsia is fire. And I'm Jamaican? What? So if, if Shinsia called you two in the morning, riding through Miami, she locked out her hotel, she needed a place to crash. She can come over? Yeah. What the hell? <laughs> okay, but what about what about her do you love? I mean, what about her Shinsia is beautiful. Look at her. Mm. She's gorgeous. But you know her. Yeah. You guys have hung out before? Mm-mm. Um, all right, the label that she's under, one of my good friends named Ding Dong, Ria Boss, big up. Um, His name is Ding Dong? Ding Dong, yeah. Ding Dong. Ding Dong, yeah, he's one of the biggest dancehall artists in the okay. world. Okay. So they're under the same management. Okay. So yeah. Um, and why haven't you managed to get next to her? Yo, you know, so just some, some people think Sato different. Mm. She's hot. Fire. What do you mean? What I mean? Bright and clean. A boy violate with spare 16. <laughs> okay. Uh, this next person has not come to the show yet, but she's been talked about. Natalie Nunn. Mm, Natalie Nunn, eh? You know, so she depends on the Zeus vibes. Why don't I show me this girl here? Me feel like Natalie, me, um, big man thing. Me look upon her and I just want like, no, sir, I can't do it because I know some people with their own around. I know some I deal with them the same way. So I can't deal with them because she and them are friends. I don't know what you said. But basically, you said no. Yeah, because she and some people with me know are friends. So she knows some people that you know? Yeah. So them think they can't work on sort out like that. Wait, wait, wait. But Shinsea knows your friend who's a dance artist. So no, but I, I want man. She knows some girl with me know. So that can't oh, work. So she's friends with somebody you smashed before? Yeah, man. Okay, got it. Got mm. it. Okay. Okay, well, this one's friend to the show. She was just here recently in single. Amber Rose. Wow. 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 Amber. So smash. Amber is, wow. <laughs> Man, this game, I feel like a piece of meat, Jason. Well, okay, it's almost over. Uh, what about this one? She's a cougar, Dolly Parton. Dolly got hits. I wonder say if Mikaki would have stand up for her. What? Me say me wonder if Mikaki would have turned up for her. Oh, would it stand up for her? Yeah. It did for that old lady at the at the little meat place with the. No, uh, sir. Did, me, me I pass on this, my G. This can't go on. She got hits that are still hitting. Beyonce just did a Jolene for her new album. No, sir. That can't work. Okay. Mm -mm. They got pills. My thing natural, brother. Okay. Oh, this next person, she has something in common with us. She's loving hip hop alum. K Michelle. All right, so K Michelle. K Michelle's a, a good friend of mine. She's one of the first people I remember, like, when I started doing my own solo thing, she embraced me and was like, yo, Safari's dope. And we was working together, we was in the studio. Oh damn! I didn't mean to do that, but um, yeah. So I look at I, I look at her as a um a friend, but a sexy friend that um. So could she get it? I'm saying, of course she can get it. K. Michelle can definitely get it. Um, let's yeah. She's a friend, but she's a hot friend. 
Okay, that, we got through Smash or Pass. Let's go on to the next game. The next game is not as difficult. It's called Name Drop. This is a game where I'm gonna put up faces of people that you may or may not know, and uh. you gotta say the first thing that comes to mind. Okay. It could be a funny story, it could be some mess, it could be whatever you think about the person when you see them, okay? Okay. All right, and it could be a funny memory. First person I'm gonna put up, Ray J. Ray J, um, icon, legend, goat. Um, my introduction into reality TV, I will never forget my first scene ever was with him. And we started, they stopped, they had to reset some shit, and Ray J tapped me. He said, Safari, I want you to know one thing. He said, this is reality TV, but you are acting. He said, enhance and overdo everything you do. And when he said that, it clicked so just, it just clicked, and I got it. And boom, breakout. So, big shout out, Tronics Network, it just launched yesterday. Um, my dating show was called Going on a Safari. Me, well, Ray's on that I, network? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's, um, yeah, I wonder if he, it didn't drop yet. He just, he's at the Breakfast Club today here in New York. He's definitely coming here, though, because I told him, I'm like, we need to do a press run, and I was like, we got to do Jason Lee and Breakfast Club. Yeah, you better come, Ray J. He's definitely coming. Okay, Pause. so you have the show, so tell me about the... Tell me about the show that you're doing on his network. So, um, you know, it's pretty much me and 10 girls. We were living in a house, and it was a process of elimination of me trying to find love. And it's just a journey that people got to watch and see how it started and see how it ended. And um, it's very entertaining, wild, and girls are crazy. Did you sleep with any of the girls? Um, you know, remember, I'm practicing self-love. Like and this. Yes, I'm like and this. um. You know, self control. Self control, and I'm being celibate. Okay. So that's a part of it. Ladies, if you love me, respect me and my body. So you're still celibate right now? Yes. How long have you been celibate? Four months. Really? Yeah. Like celibate is in like sleeping with other people or like no masturbation. Nobody. Ever. What the hell? How are you celibate and sleeping with other people? No, I mean, no, not celibate meaning you haven't slept with anybody else, but you still masturbate or nothing. Um, Because there's a difference. I learned this recently. What's the difference? Well, I recently was like, oh, I haven't slept with anybody in a while. They were like, but do you still masturbate? I'm like, okay, what, what does that mean? Semen retention, not being non-sexual at all is like a thing now. Versus, I haven't slept with any other human being, but yeah, I still pleasure it's, myself. It's an energy difference. It's an energy difference when yeah. you hold back. You know that you're a guy. I don't hold back. I'm gay. Okay. Uh, this next person, she was just at the White House. Glorilla. She was at the White House? Yeah, she's with the president. She was with Joe. Where? Yeah. Um, Glorilla. When she first dropped, I felt inspired by her. Is that when you tweeted that she was your favorite rapper out, but then said you don't even listen to rap? Yeah, damn, you guys are on it. But that's why I said she's inspiring. I remember I was listening to her and I was watching her videos. I'm like, damn, she's ill. And then, um, yeah. Mm. Shout out Glow. Okay. I don't know her, I never met her a day in my life. She's sweet. Okay, this next person, she's a uh, soon to be mom again. Dre and Michelle. Wow. Oh, I did see that. It's so crazy. You just can't live your life and just it just not be news. You know, God bless her and her pregnancy, and people in the internet need to realize that she's having a baby, and if you don't have anything nice to say, do not say it at all. Don't let this woman go to the internet and everyone have all of these mean things to say to a woman who is birthing a child. It is just very unhealthy and detrimental to a woman's mind state, and um, that's not cool. So all you internet bullies who think it's cool to just go to people's page and say whatever you want because you think someone's famous and they could take it, it's not nice. Mm -hmm. Okay, this next person, Marla Negra. 
Amada, um, Amada's a workaholic. I be telling her, like, she she got more jobs than a Jamaican. She just picked up a new job. She's hosting some Spanish show on, I think, Univision, like, every morning. It's like the news. It's like, you know, if there was, like, an Oprah Winfrey news morning show, she's doing the version of that on the, her channel. She's a workaholic. Um, she's an entrepreneur, too, and ha- building houses in Dominican Yeah, Republic. she got houses in DR. She doing her thing. She, um... She getting it. She just bought another new stupid crib. Mm. She like 12,000 square feet, big ass indoor pool. She getting it. I told her she needs to start showing some of that shit. Go to the next one. Charlamagne the God. Nah, that ain't it, bro. <laughs> that ain't it. Wait, when he said that to you on The Breakfast Club when you did the freestyle, did you hate him after that or did you find that funny? Nah, let me tell you what it is with Charlamagne. And he used to say this to me all the time. He used to be like, Safari. He, he would give me props and talk to me, like, in private. But he's like, bro, I'll never give you props publicly. So no matter what you do, I'm, that's just what you're going to get. He said that? Yeah, he, and it's just way more entertaining. So I was like, you know what? I respect that. Because he was telling me what I should do, what kind of stuff I should do or whatever. Last time I saw him was at the BET Awards when I was on the red carpet with no shirt. And he was like, damn, why did I walk in next to him and I got to be taking pictures next to him while he's standing here with no shirt? Um... Charlemagne, he, he good. That's a, damn, why he look like, like, you could have, sm- he needs to smile more in his pictures. He has the same facial expression in every single picture for the past 20 years. I was going to say, this must be an old picture because he's in therapy, but this is literally South by Southwest last week. <laughs> <laughs> but so he, he gives you your props in private, but then when he. Like when all of, like when that shit happened, yeah. he was like, Safari, you're not a whack rapper, but. I don't even remember what the hell he used to say. But when you did the freestyle and he said, no, nah, that ain't it, did you feel like he dissed you intentionally or was it like him just reacting to what he thought he, he did? Like? He just was being entertaining because he do that shit to everybody up there. Mm-hmm. He couldn't say, damn, okay, Safari, you nice, you a goat. No. He don't give nobody their props. Mm. His job's to hate. But Charlemagne, good job. I'm proud of you. <laughs> His job is to hate. Hilarious. Okay, this next person, Black China. Black China found God, changed her life. I'm proud of her. Complete new person. Um, Everybody, I feel like a lot of people from years and years and years ago, it's like now this is the era of finding yourself and resetting and regrouping and just rechanneling your focus and just trying to be a better person and not doing shit to chase this um, Hollywood lifestyle, the lifestyle of this business that sucks us into forgetting that we're human and not taking care of ourselves. So you guys exchanged numbers in 2018, and when she was asked... What the hell are you talking about? Where'd you get that from? You did. <laughs> and I said that? You did. <laughs> I'm Hollywood Unlocked. Come on. And then when she was asked about your OnlyFans page on the No Jumper podcast and walked out, why, what was that about? Oh, I, that happened? Yeah. Wow, I didn't know that. You didn't know that? No. Mm. That's cool. So did you guys ever hang out? No. Really? No. Okay. I'm glad oh. this chair is so comfortable. Oh, we ha- okay, good, because you're almost out of here. We only have one more name to put on the screen. Donald Trump. <sighs> Donald Trump. He let the niggas get money. Trump, he, you feel like you made more money when Trump was in office or it don't matter? Okay, a good question. I made more money when Trump was in office, but I don't know that it was because of Trump. And let me explain why. We were in COVID, so I was locked in the house, not spending any money. Mm -hmm. I was in the house and everybody was now online reading, watching. I dropped the book. So Mm -hmm. everybody was reading my book. Everybody was watching my shows. And everybody was online on Hollywood Unlock, and the and because of saving money and doing all that, I figured out how to get the bag for real. My mm-hmm. revenue went from my revenue went crazy. Yeah, it, it literally had another zero on a six figure number. It was crazy. Yeah, in that, that first year, that and then was the second co- year double that. When year did he start? Uh, I was can't that, remember. Was that COVID? Like, yeah, because he kept calling the Chinese virus. I remember that. But you actually like this guy. You've tweeted that you like him. Yo, he's entertaining. It's like now, I don't even remember who's president. Don't nothing be going on. You don't know who the president is right now? 
Who is it? Um, Michelle Obama, right? I don't remember. It's Joe Biden. You know Joe that. Biden. I thought he was the vice president. Kamala Harris is the vice president. I, th- I thought Kamala was Kamala. The- Kamala. Kamala. I thought Kamala was the main president and Joe was the vice. You didn't think that. Bro, everyone made a big deal about a black woman being in office. So I'm thinking she's the president. I ain't paying attention to what the hell's so going are, on. Are you this. voting for Trump? Trump definitely getting my vote. You're going to vote for Trump? Why not? Ray J got you. Because Ray J and him are friends. Oh, yeah. Ray J do rock with him. But yeah. you really are voting for Trump. I probably won't even vote because I, he's going to win no matter what. Trump? Yeah, they, everyone, they, they tired of Joe. They want Trump. Niggas want their money. They want Trump back. Trump put money in niggas' pockets. Trump did not put money in the pocket. Congress put money in the pockets. Trump signed the checks. He just put his name on it. You know that. Yeah, I don't follow politics. I just know that when he was in office, there was a lot of free money around. Like PPP? <laughs> nah, I ain't, I ain't never get caught up into that. That's one I thing. I, yeah, like, I'm, I'm, I'm glad I don't ever got to worry about no illegal shenanigans. Yeah. Okay, so what's next for you since we played all the games? I'm going to just keep doing what I've been doing, and that's getting it, staying out of the way, and letting them see what I want them to see. Um, oh, I got two movies coming out this year, and that's fire. Um, this movie, one is called Ballin'. Me, Lance Stevenson, I play a, a sports analyst. Shout out Chris Gotti, Rich Blacks. That movie is official, too. Um, and this next movie called Vendetta. It's like... a uh, it's like Shatters too. Where, where, where are they gonna air? Um, they're gonna be on um, you know, all the streaming platforms. Okay. Where all the movies is coming out at. I'm excited about that dropping. Um, I got the video out. You know, the, I'm just you know, I just be doing shit, <laughs> and I, I'm just blessed, honestly. Like I don't sit here and try to act like I'm planning and I know what I'm doing, bro. I'm winging it, and my wing has turned into. Jet wings, and I'm grateful for it. Do you want more kids? Definitely no. I don't want multiple baby mamas. Uh, definitely, like, I'm cool with just having one and the two. I, I don't. I would never want to spread myself like that. I don't understand how people be having multiple baby mamas and all of that. So, that's that's not me. I did one. We have two, and I'm cool with that. I, I low key want to get neutered. I, I've been wanting to do that for the longest. People telling me not to do it, but. Neutered is for animals, Safari. I don't want any more kids with any. Nick else. has twelve, with multiple women. Nick Cannon is crazy, <laughs> and I know Nick Cannon. I don't know how he does that. <laughs> Christmas is busy. What every birthday, all year is busy. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't want that. You know what I want, and that's crazy throat. I mean, no, that's love, and practicing. Semen retention and celibacy. And Shinseya. And Tyler. <laughs> together. Okay, wait. So, do you have a boy and a girl? I have a boy and oh, a girl. So, you don't need any more kids. Exactly. Okay. Yep. I got their names in here. Who do you like the, the most? Like Out of my you, kids? Yeah. Can you like one kid more than the other? You know, people say that and then they're like, oh, you're not supposed to, but... I, I love them both the same, but my daughter is a little older, so of course she's more, you know, expressive on her feelings. My son, he's a little hard ass. Really? Yeah, he's a he's. I think he's gonna be a tough one. He took after his mom. You know what? Erica's he, hard. She's, no, she's, yeah, she's, I feel I feel like he got her he got her toughness. Yeah. You know, but um, look, we're gonna. We're gonna fix things, Jason. Who you and Erica? No, you. I want like you and Erica to like one day we just say, "Hey, look." I don't hate her. So I, yeah, that's I, what I'm saying. It's like whatever it was. It's like uh, sometimes you kind of don't remember, but then it's like you let shit go, let it pass, and then we can just. No, no. I listen. I wish her the best, you know, mm-hmm. and I want her to be the best. And I think she has a lot of other pressing priorities in front of her, and I ain't one of those. If she ever somehow passes across the show and she wants to come on the show, fine, cool. But there's no, I have no beef with nobody. Yeah. My show, sometimes I ask questions that make the internet go crazy. Like, this, this interview, then they're going to go crazy. 
but it's a show that I have to ask questions. If I don't ask the questions, then I'll never know the answer. I still don't know the answer to the question I asked you multiple times in the show. I know, I know it in real life, but in the show I don't know, because I'm not going to validate what we know happened to you in that garage. <laughs> Yo, I look like a damn big ass koala bear maniac right now. I should release that video rapping over it or something. Like, can you write me a song? Like, get me out of here. Feature. Jason, why, why, why you can't just be a nice guy? <laughs> I'm a great guy. I'm just an even better interviewer. But no, you're thank you're, you. you're great at what you do. I'm not gonna lie. This Amiri shirt is soaked. I've been sweating. The whole time, and it's not the fur coat. This guy has me sweating bricks. Oh my gosh! On my way here, I was having this turning feeling in my stomach. I'm like, oh my god, I can't believe I'm finally going to Jason's show. You did not have that feeling. It was um, <laughs> it was a little feeling of a uneasy, bubbly gut feeling in my stomach. You know, because I know Jason, you just never know what to expect with him. Wait, can I just say this? Only because you're my friend. Mm -hmm. The other day, I didn't know if Safari was going to come on my show because I'm tired of him dodging me. I feel like he'd be dodging the show. And I text you. This guy, he says some crazy shit when he texts me. <laughs> the threat he made to me if I didn't come on his show, wow. <laughs> well, you came. Pause. I came, so he's not, he's not going to um, put out this fake rumor that he said he was going to put out if I didn't show up. And um, just, I don't just, just, I mean, without getting into it, 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 you know, now knowing what I know about how you made that, 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 um, that thing you sold, the product, I could have just said, like, I went with you that day. <laughs> anyway, listen, um, Johnny, hand me that. <laughs> That's all I got. Thank you, Safari. For hey, listen, on. if you need health insurance, go to oinsurance.com. We're changing lives. Um, we really are. And what is it? Hollywood Unlocked Cares? Healthcare Unlocked. Put Healthcare Unlocked. Put some respect on my Sorry. brand. Hey. Thank you, Safari, for coming on the show. Give it up for Safari, y'all. Hey, thanks so much for watching The Jason Lee Show. To watch more episodes like that, click right here. And if you want to see more, subscribe below and click that notification bell.